Welcome back, everyone. Thanks for joining me again. It's time for another little adventure in science. In all the vast areas of debate between the flat and globe Earth community, almost all come down to one of two different arguments. There is no curve, and gravity is not real. Today we're going to take a look at what flat earthers believe gravity actually is and how they are decidedly wrong. In the flat earth worldview, gravity is literally not a thing. They refuse to accept Newton's laws of gravitational motion or Einstein's general theory of relativity, which describes gravity not as a force, but as a consequence of curvature of space-time caused by the uneven distribution of mass. Flat earthers believe all interactions on the plane are dictated by two simple factors. I'm your density. And buoyancy. But don't take my word for it. Let's listen to some of the leaders in the flat earth community and what they feel causes objects to go down. Yeah, yeah. D density and buoyancy works, um, you know, to a degree to explain what goes up must come down. In normal cases, if you're discussing this with someone, they're going to tell you, well, you still need gravity in order for density and buoyancy to work. And, and that's not true. Uh, you merely need a tendency for higher density objects to uh, natural, you know, naturally find a place at rest towards the ground. What I can say is if this dish soap is the skydiver, as he's fallen through the atmosphere, his rate of fall begins to slow as he goes through more dense mediums. And if it got to the point where there were gases that existed in our environment that were equal to the object's weight, in this case Felix's weight, if the weight of his final medium was the same, he would actually come to a stop, wouldn't he? Because this cherry tomato could be argued to be Felix. So as he's falling through the atmosphere, this he's more dense than all of these layers until he gets down to this one, the dish soap, where he is of equal density to it. Day to day life, if you were to say drop your keys, that's an example of gravity, but I'm assuming... No, 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 that's really an that, example no, no, the, the keys are more dense than the air they're passing through. But the only reason it, that that's happening is because of gravitational theory. So if I, drop my, explain... if I drop my helium balloon, will that do the same thing? No, because helium is, is different from the air around it. That, that, that's also a component so, of Sorry, you, you, seem to be, you seem to be saying an explanation that relates it to the air around it. Wouldn't that be relative density that you're explaining the balloon going up? So the air is more dense. The reason is yeah, more... that's relative density. That's what I just said. So you're no, using oh the explanation God. of rest. sorry. Oh come on, sorry. come on. Let's, let's, let's keep just... it. We, we're off on a track. I just want to know where you observe gravity in nature. Just tell me that. I don't want to don't want to describe relative density and what happens in relative density. Just tell me where we observe gravity in nature. Because dropping keys is its relative density versus the air. So if I drop helium, it goes up. So that's not an example that I can take as an example of gravity. Long before the theory of gravity was a glimmer in Newton's imagination, the natural physics of density and buoyancy already perfectly explained why apples fall down. Quite simply, objects fall or rise based on their relative density to the medium surrounding them. Apples fall because they are denser than the air, while helium balloons rise because they are lighter. No gravity necessary. There are many, many holes in this line of thinking. Many have been taken to task by other creators, but I think I've discovered a new dent in their armor that our flat earth friends haven't thought of. First, let's start with the premise established by Eric Dubay. We can also prove this fact of relative density by filling a balloon with approximately half helium and half air. Since helium is lighter than the oxygen, nitrogen, and other gases that compose the air around us, filling a balloon with just the right amount of helium to compensate for and balance out the density of the plastic results in a gravity-defying, levitating balloon at equilibrium that neither rises nor falls. Now, the simple fact that Dubay and all other flat earthers completely overlook is that yes, gravity is acting on this balloon, just as it's acting on this hammer, and this elephant, and this building. Gravity is still pulling them down. And here's the rub. The principles of buoyancy and density, when you completely remove gravity, is based on relative density. And when an object is of higher density, it goes down. 
until it meets a material of even higher density, such as the ground, or a similar density, such as the air around this balloon. The density of air is the mass of the air molecules per a unit of volume of atmospheric gas. If we were to measure a specific volume, let's say one cubic meter, and its density is about 1.2754 kilograms of air mass, this means that if you are able to physically measure the mass of the air in that cube, there are 1.2754 kilograms of air molecules inside it. And based on Dubé's demonstration, the same should be said about the balloon. Because at this density, the balloon is no longer trying to go down, and it's not going up. It's happy floating at this location, so it too must also be of the exact same density. But why isn't it floating higher or lower in the sky? Because air has a measurable density gradient. As you can see on this chart, the density of air goes down as you increase in altitude. That means that if the air inside our balloon had a density of, let's say, 0.666, it would float up. Above the density of 1.2754, all the way up to about 6,000 meters, where it finds a similar density. And at 6,000 meters, this balloon is no longer more buoyant than the air around it, and it again finds a happy medium. What you will also notice about this chart is that pressure also goes down as we increase in altitude. Pressure has been an extremely hot debate between Anthony Riley and Bob the Science Guy recently, specifically the question of if you can have pressure without a container. But that's not today's topic. Bob has handled it very well. Anthony, not so much. Now the next question we need to ask though, what is pressure? Pressure is a continuous physical force exerted on or against an object by something in contact with it. In relation to air, this is the physical air molecules bumping against things. More molecules, more bumps. More bumps, more pressure. Pretty simple, right? Now, even if we remove the G from the formula of buoyancy, there are enough variables that one could believe that gravity is not needed to explain why things go up and down in air. But what about water? Now, obviously, water is more dense than air. So let's lower our volume from a cubic meter to a cubic centimeter. Ocean water at the surface is approximately 1.025 grams per cubic centimeter. And similar to air, its density does increase as you go deeper. But that's where the similarities end, and they end dramatically. From the surface to about 1,000 meters, it does increase due to heat variations near the surface, sunlight, and even rain diluting the salinity of the water. But past 1,000 meters, ocean water does not get denser. It remains at 1.028 grams per cubic centimeter, from 1,000 meters all the way to the deepest trench of the abyss. Here, right here, at 1,000 meters below the surface of the ocean, is where the flat earth buoyancy and density argument fails. It fails completely, and it fails absolutely. Now remember back to our talk about pressure. Pressure is caused by a continuous force exerted on or against an object by something in contact with it. In air, pressure goes up as you go down, and the density of the molecules go up. But in water, as I've already shown, beyond 1,000 meters, the density does not increase. That means that an object with a density of 1.028 grams per cubic centimeter will continue to sink until it reaches 1,000 meters. That also means that the water at 1,000 meters is the exact same density as the water at 5,000 meters. And therefore, if the law of flat earth buoyancy and density holds true, it has no force acting on it, causing it to want to go down. This cubic centimeter of seawater is no longer falling. It is happy right where it is. There is no force pulling it, trying to make it go farther into the abyss. But if that were true, then the pressure under the water should also stop at 1,000 meters, exactly like the density curve. But does it? Well, let's take a look. At 10 meters, the pressure of seawater is just over 100 kilopascals, or approximately one atmosphere of pressure. 
Now this is above the one atmosphere above the water. At 100 meters, we're at just over 1,000 kilopascals, or just under 10 atmospheres of pressure. At 1,000 meters, 10,000 kilopascals, and 100 atmospheres of pressure. Now here's the important number. The density of water at 1,000 meters is the same as the density at 2,000 meters. If buoyancy and density were the only forces causing a down, the pressure should be exactly the same. But is it? Well, at 2,000 meters, we record 20,000 kilopascals, or almost 200 atmospheres of pressure. But how is that possible? The density of water at 1,000 meters is the same at 2,000 meters, and 3,000, or even at 7,000. So there literally are no more molecules in the water to be causing this increase in pressure. Every cubic centimeter of water from 1,000 meters to the depths of the ocean are no longer trying to go down, according to the laws of buoyancy and density. So then, what is our cause? Why is the density increasing? Well, while researching this topic for a clear and concise way to describe this to flat earthers so they can see their flaw, I came across a video from the Khan Academy, and I couldn't have provided a better explanation as to why pressure goes up as we go deeper into the ocean. In the last video, we showed that uh, any external pressure on a, on, a, on a liquid in a container is distributed evenly through the liquid. But that only applied to external pressure. Let's think a little bit about what the internal pressure is within a liquid. And we're all familiar, I think, with the notion of you know, the, the deeper you go into a fluid or you know, the deeper you dive into the ocean, the, uh, the higher the pressure on you. So let's, let's, let's see if we can think about that a little bit more analytically and, and get a framework for uh, what the pressure is at any depth under the water or really in any fluid. So here I've, I've, I've drawn a, uh, a cylinder. And in that cylinder I have some fluid. And I'm also assuming that I'm doing this on a planet that has the same mass as Earth. But it's on the same mass as uh, a planet of the same mass. So the gravity is the same. So one, there is gravity. So the, the liquid will fill this, this container on the bottom part of it. And also, uh, the gravitational constant would be the same as Earth. So let's say within this cylinder, I have a, um, I don't know, like a, a thin, thin piece of foil or something that takes up the entire, the entire area, uh, the, the cross-sectional area of this cylinder. And in order for something to be static or it's not moving, well, we know that the net forces on it must be zero. And this force down, this force down must be equal to the force up, right? So what is the force down? What is the force down acting on this cylinder? Well, it's going to be the weight of the water above it, right? Because we, we're in a gravitational environment. And so this water has some mass. And, uh, and, and, and so whatever that mass is times the gravitational constant will equal the force down. So let's figure out what that is. So the force down is going to be equal to the mass of the liquid times gravity. And what is that mass of the liquid? Well, now I'll introduce you to a concept called density. And I think you understand what density is. It's kind of how much there is of something in a given amount of volume, how much mass per volume. And that's the definition of density. So rho, which looks like a p to me, that equals mass per volume mass per volume, and that's the density. And so that the units are kilograms per meter cubed. Making sure that we now know what density is, let's go back to what we were doing before. So we said that the, the downward force is equal to the mass of the liquid times the gravitational force, right? And so what is the mass of the liquid? Well, we could use this formula right here. Density is equal to mass times volume, so we could also say that mass is equal to density times volume. See, the force down is equal to, let's substitute this with this. The mass of the liquid is equal to the density of the liquid times the volume of the liquid. I could get rid of these L's. Times gravity. That The downward force is equal to the density of the fluid. I'll stop writing the, the L or the F or whatever I was doing there. The density of this liquid times the volume of the liquid. And the volume of the liquid 
is just the height times the area of the liquid. So that is just times the height times the area and then times gravity times gravity. So this is the force. What is the pressure on this on this on this foil that I have floating? Well, it's the force divided by the area of this foil pressure this of this foil. So it's I would take the force and divide it by the area, which is the same thing as A. So let's do that. So let's divide both sides of this equation by area. So the pressure coming down, so that's P sub D. Almost sounds like a rapper's name. P sub D. So the downward pressure is going to be equal to the downward force divided by area which is going to be equal to this expression divided by area. So essentially, we can just get rid of the area here, right? So it equals P H A G divided by A. So get rid of the A's in both situations. So the downward pressure, pressure downward, is equal to the density of the fluid times the depth of the fluid, essentially, or the height of, of the fluid above it, times the gravitational constant, P H G. So let's use that um, in, in, in an example. If I were on the same planet, and let's say um, this is water, and so the density of water, so the density of water, and this is something good to memorize, is 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. So let's say that you know we have no atmosphere, but I were to go, I don't know, 10 meters under the water, roughly 30 feet under the water. What would be the pressure on me? So my pressure would be, the pressure would equal the density of water, 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. Make sure your units are right. So I'm, I'm running out of space, so I don't want to do the units. Times the height, 10 meters times the gravitational acceleration, 9.8 meters per second squared. It's a, good ex it's a good exercise for you to make sure the units work out. That's what? 10,000 times 9.8. So the pressure is going to be equal to 98,000 98, pascals. So if someone could please explain how the pressure at 5,000 meters is greater than the pressure at 1,000 meters, and do so without invoking gravity or other flat earth magic, that would be great. And I can almost guarantee there's a Nobel Prize in your future. But I won't hold my breath. Because if you get a swimming pool, there's more pressure at the bottom of the pool than there is at the top of the pool. It's caused by the weight of the water above you, isn't it? When I stand at the side of the swimming pool, I can exert a so-called force on the scales, and I can tell you how heavy I am. Chuck them scales in the deep end of a swimming pool, and you can't even put a weight on them. It's caused by the weight of the water above you, isn't it? Can't even put a weight on them. It's caused by the weight of the water above you, isn't it? Can't even put a weight on them. Thanks for joining me again this week, everybody. I hope you learned something, and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like my content, a like and subscribe is always appreciated. Comment down below if you think I got something wrong. And until the next time, don't forget, stay flat. It's caused by the weight of the water above you, isn't it? Can't even put a weight on.